Hello, good morning. I'm today in Novaya and I want to tell you the promised story about the water. And this is why I'm here in the harbor of Novaya, which is actually a very important start for our story and why you will hear very, very soon. Just to turn the window. So, I'm starting here with these stones and the date which we have on the floor 1982 drinking water came to Navalla and it came from the mountain from the mainland and what was before before 1982 there were many difficulties but if we pass the difficulties and go back to the history to the ancient times then it was here amazing story of water because this year was a harbor a harbor of Rome antique Rome Navalia and they had in this harbor um, even a factory to produce those colors linens. What did they needed for that? They needed a lot of water and sea snails. Actually, the same we had in those antique days, even in Salona, Marca Aurelia Julia Salona, and we had it also in the Diocletian Palace in Split. And even here, imagine on the island of Park, Fulonica were existing, where they have produced those purple uh, materials the, for imperial, for emperors. They needed sea snails, they needed a lot of water. Actually, you see today there are a lot of houses here around. And once they have started to build their modern houses here, then they have found in the soil a lot of sea snails. And as we have found a Roman aqueduct here, so we can just come to the conclusion that they have had here really those Fulonica, where they have produced uh, that uh, material of purple imperial color. So. Today, a beautiful square with the uh, rows of winds, uh, which are also very important for our town of Novalia, because Novalia is situated on the island, and you know, an island is an island. Sometimes you depend on winds. Before they got the bridge here, something about 50 years ago, then they really could just depend on wind, and if there was strong Buddha, you see here on the rose of winds we have Bura from two direction from Seng and from Karlobag. They can develop really very strong. So even today actually the bridge can be closed uh, with strong, strong Bura. And imagine before where you could only travel by boat. Here you see now the harbor. Now it's peaceful, it's a quiet sea, but imagine how it is here when all these waters are turbulent. There in the distance we see where the amber road was passing. So if you put that in all that historical connection, the amber road, Liburni were also traveling there, and here the harbor of Navalia with a lot of water which came from the aqueduct and there to the right the stones the stones which are actually from the Roman stone quarry with a date 1982 when drinking water came from there behind we see the velvet mountain we put the pipes actually under the water, under the sea. You see, Navalia 
the island of Park and once it is a seaside, once it is a drinking water, boat can mean sometimes trouble, but very often it is life. It's really life because living on an island, your life is the sea and of course your life uh, is always drinking water. So imagine, now I will just make a few steps uh, further towards the town. Imagine once when this was a uh, Roman harbor. Of course there were no hotels, the houses were not here, it was just the harbor. The last or first of every one house was somewhere behind these palm trees. And uh, they got actually water here through the aqueduct from the Welt in Skopal. And I will show you today that uh, Roman aqueduct. But uh, till the 1982, till the water came here, and for that purpose, uh, people of Nobalia have made this uh, beautiful, beautiful monument to the Rosa winds, to the water. So before that, they have used actually uh, that uh, Roman aqueduct, which has been found accidentally. Um, they have used it as they have put inside some uh, other pipes. Once then they have used the power of uh, windmills or the wind to pump the water to come through the pipes. Later on they have used it to actually uh, with a diesel motor. Actually, none of those solutions uh, was so good because uh, they uh, had to use many often the power of uh, donkeys as uh, that water was never enough uh, for the town of Novalia. <laughs> but imagine in the Roman period that water was quite enough for all the harbour, for all the factory, actually the Fulonica. And uh, now you can all, of course, think of those Roman architects, how genius they were that they could bring from one small source, uh, actually, a lot of quantity of water into one spot. Talking now about this place, bringing it actually to the harbor of Navalia. I'm walking slowly towards uh, the place where I will show you that uh, Roman aqueduct. But in front of us, there is a small church, and I'm not going to tell you now, uh, now something about uh, the history of the church or something about uh, all the values uh, which we have uh, inside, because it is really special, and there are stories which I can tell you some other occasion about the church itself. But I want to mention you now that from this uh, church, even nowadays, we have a pilgrimage starting for the Assumption, the day of the Assumption of the Holy Mother, the 15th of August. People gather here and from this church they go towards nowadays town of Park. <clears throat> Why I am telling you that? I'm telling you that because somehow with this story it is connected again also the story about water. How come? You know Park, the town Park did not exist in the period when here it was Navalia, when here it was this uh, harbor it is not existed, did not exist, but there were people living in Navalia and Tsarska and Stara Navalia. Tsarska today was then Tsissa, 
And actually, uh, from that uh, Tsarska, we have that interesting story, which brings us now for the pilgrimage, starting from this church and going to the town of Park. Why? There is a legend, and actually there are many, many legends uh, about uh, the town of uh, and the whole island of Punk. And for those who are very interested about those legends, there is uh, a certain man in the town of Punk, um, also uh, leading some pages about the radio of Punk, Portada, and he is actually collecting quite a, a lot of information about the whole island. So, also one of those legends I have found in details in uh, his uh, pages. So he's talking about sort of Sodoma and Gomorrah, what happened in the Bay of Tasca. And uh, the guard was not so happy seeing about what uh, really um, was... Uh, happening in that bay. So actually he said to an angel, go there and please see if there are any good people because I want to spare them. And yes, he found Bona, one girl with her family who was really good and helped him several times. One when he was very thirsty, once and, and uh, um, hungry, and once when he actually was uh, very wet because of uh, because why sister of that uh, good girl he put a lot of water on him. She was like any other from the bay of uh, Tissa of Tasca, not quite. Uh, example for good behaving. So he has seen that there was that Bona uh, who really deserves to be spared. Uh -huh. We have bells here. The clock. So what happened? He told to that Bona, the angel told to Bona, well, go early in the morning towards south and when you see the spring of water there take a rest and she went and the next morning when she went that uh, bay of Tasca simply collapsed into water it was really the end of uh, that a beautiful place with many villa rustiche which were in the whole bay. Today we have also found a lot of containers of those uh, for, for food of those uh, rich people who lived in the bay. So that good sister, she really stayed by the world and today in the town of Park, we have even one uh, location with the name Vodice. So this brings us to the conclusion that Voda, water, is somehow connecting this Novaya, because Saska is just a few kilometers away from here, and that was all one community, with the, the town of uh, Park. So, there is even one historiker from uh, the island, Ruich. He wants to bring in uh, conclusion that uh, Park, the town, is actually not coming from Latin word, um, which would mean village, but from the Greek word pege, which would mean water. So, a 
actually we don't have any Greek remains here on the island of Pag, but still we have some uh, funerals, some tombs we have found from the Greek period. So who knows, maybe some Greeks really lived here, or maybe just accidentally they were passing here and then died so that we can have some tombs, but no other remains of Greeks on the island. But still, the historical, he wants to bring in the conclusion that Park, the town, has actually the origin of its name in the water. So now you see, water here, water there, and we are walking now towards the city museum, which today belongs to the Centrum for Culture, and actually they take care of the remains of the aqueduct, which I want to show you. But before we enter, on our right hand side there are some houses with their uh, fields and gardens and in those gardens actually people have found it openings openings which were part of that uh, Roman aqueduct I have already mentioned our Romans they were really genius because they have managed to bring water from a small welt and to have it in the harbor with a lot of quantity of water. So they have managed somehow to accumulate it, to, to, to have it always in bigger quantity as it originally would be because of that na natural fall to 100% of uh, declination. So they were really, really genius, our Romans. So here there is also a house of a friend of mine, and she has in her garden also one of those openings, a really amazing. And those openings, one of those openings, has been found uh, the pure accident when one boy fell into the water, uh, into the opening, and then when have uh, when they have searched for him, and they have discovered the whole channel, the whole aqueduct. Immediately, people from Vienna came because you know in these periods also the Vienna had uh, its empire here. And so, of course, they wanted to excavate it completely and to see what uh, was happening with the channel. So here we have the city museum, the museum with uh, the antique uh, aqueduct. I don't want now to walk with you all around, but I want to show you that you need actually a lamp, not always, but still, sometimes. I have seen there are some people, so I want to show you here a model which is remain of old boat from those Liburni, really important people who lived thousands of years before Christ in these waters. So, we want to see now that uh, Roman aqueduct, which is exactly in the museum. Actually, they have built a museum for that aqueduct. Today, if you want to visit it, you can use these helmets, you can use the boots, and of course, always the lamp. I want to show you now this panel, you see, uh, 0.7 above the sea level, and then the natural fault, it's going to zero to the harbor. Eight openings, vertical, disposed. And actually, they were probably done just to come down and to be able 
to dig below this hill of Figurice, to dig from Škopaj and to come with a lot of water to the harbour of Navalia. And as I said, a boy fell in one of those openings and then they came from Vienna immediately to excavate and they were surprised at what they have seen. They have seen that here we have a Roman aqueduct. Talking about Croatia, especially Dalmatia, we have our very famous uh, aqueduct in uh, split in the Diocletian's palace. We have it in Sarajevo, but nobody expected to have it here. You see, they have built it everything by hands in the rock by hands and the natural fault from Škopal to the harbour of Navalia. So this is really, really unique. Nobody knew what they would find here. And today you can visit it, as I said, as tourists, we have here tourists, they use the helmets and boots because there are some mud and then they go to visit the aqueduct. So what can I tell you? The story of water in Novalia is much much older than anyone would think. The story of water connected with those sisters, with Tsarska, the bay, which collapsed into the sea water, and with Bona, the sister, who went and escaped to Pag, where they have settled down. But once I will come to Pag, and I will continue the story about Pag, Today I just wanted to put you in connection that water, the water which we have in the sea with many antique remains and the water which was always needed for our life to drink it and actually Romans very genius, we have had to have time to learn how to have enough water for all of us. So now you know why on that monument from which we have started, we have today actually also the monument of water in Tante Doshla. Before I say to you goodbye, I want to show you this very, very unique anchor. It is antique, it is wood found untouched in the waters of Tsarska. And now, for now, I want to tell you goodbye.